Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today to continue our discussion around resiliency in architecture. My name is Esther rivard and I'm a senior associate architect at Keyesian in Calgary and one of the sustainability lead. Today, we will discuss workplace resiliency with Suzanne Campbell, one of our principal in the Toronto studio and, and our workplace uh, strategy lead. Hi, Suzanne. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Esther. So let's get started. What is a resilient workplace? Well, a resilient workplace is a people and place thing. It is a combination of an agile workforce um, that can work flexibly, you know, anywhere. Uh, currently, we've been working remotely at home, but also uh, hope we'll be able to leverage our, our built environment back at the office, but really work anywhere. And it's also a flexible work environment. It is uh, flexible in terms of uh, that remote work, which we've all been engaged with uh, uh, during COVID. And really, we imagine in a post-COVID future that this attempt at uh, hybrid is going to be a permanent one. And where do you see the role of sustainability in that resilient workplace? Well, the beauty of a resilient workplace is it is a sustainable workplace. Um, by its very nature, it is uh, going to conserve on energy consumption in a variety of ways. Uh, reducing footprint uh, is just one of them. Uh, reducing, um, you know, commuting uh, transportation is another. But it also provides uh, great sustainability for the business and the kind of practices that are aligned with uh, environmental sustainability are really aligned with those same goals uh, that uh, that businesses and organizations have. Mm -hmm. So so it's it's about employees' behavior and operation, not just about mm -hmm. the building themselves. It's a, yeah, it's yeah. a combination of the mm -hmm. two and, and having that flexibility both for the people uh, to feel as though they have the liberty to work anywhere and to have a very flexible environment uh, that, you know, allows that pulse of uh, uh, employees coming to the office, uh, coming coming and going, uh, you know, really at, uh, at, at the whim, the, uh, you know, that serves the best interests of the business and, you know, their own well-being. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about the spaces uh, and the buildings now, so what are the sustainable strategies that you can integrate in your workplace? Well, the interesting thing is that an, an awful lot of those strategies have been taken care of by uh, the landlords. The landlords have recognized very early uh, the advantage, both economic and from a, an attraction and retention of great tenants perspective. Uh, the benefits of uh, having very sustainable buildings. That's why there was uh, a whole cycle through of you know, LEED certifications and well building certifications and, and other, you know, sort of, uh, you know, flagships of the uh, of their of their portfolio. And, uh, you know, tenants choosing the right building, um, you know, really allows them to take advantage of all of those initial uh, uh, you know, innovations that the landlords have adopted. Mm -hmm. I think a good example of those um, base bu building feature that tenants should be looking at, a great example would be the Edmonton Federal Building, one of uh, Keyesian Lead Gold Certified Project. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the strategy that was uh, implemented in, in this project was to move all of the uh, e existing above, above ground parking underground into a parkade mm -hmm. and replacing it with a vegetated garden that are actually mm -hmm. irrigated with rainwater collected on the, on the building and on the side into large tank on the ground. So this, um, this one strategy, along with a, a lot of green roofs, contribute to reduce the heat island effect, uh, also better manage the stormwater directly on site, and provide some healthy urban gardens for the community. So those are some, that, that's mm -hmm. an example of great feature uh, that, that you're talking about. Yeah. That's a fantastic example because it really speaks to that people in place. Uh, that together it's a benefit to the people because they have the enjoyment uh, and, you know, sort of health giving benefits of a natural garden, um, you know, within their workspace. And, you know, the advantage of uh, the environmental sustainability of the diversion of, uh, you know, rainwater to, a, you know, a much better use, uh, not just uh, funneled into uh, sewage systems, etc. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what about the interior now? What are some of those strategies mm. that tenant can implement? Yeah, well, uh, you know, a tenant has an awful lot of choice uh, when they uh, enter into a lease arrangement uh, or an owned arrangement with their, you know, with their office space or workspaces. Uh, they can choose water saving plumbing, for example, for all of the fixturing. Um, it's, you know, highly, con you know, conservative of, uh, of, uh, of water usage. Um, just the lighting that is required in a building, uh, they can use daylight uh, sensors, they can use occupancy sensors that really lowers, uh, you know, the energy demand uh, on a building's infrastructure. Uh, ensure that uh, they have proper ventilation, that they don't have, an, uh, you know, they don't construct a lot of walls that will require uh, a lot more mechanical infrastructure, um, very important and allows that kind of natural airflow. Uh, to introduce natural elements into the space and biophilic um, elements that really, uh, you know, make people feel good. So it has a, you know, a great impact on people's well-being, um, as well as, uh, you know, using natural materials are generally uh, sourced locally so uh, regional material sourcing you know is also a very valid um, you know encouragement of uh, you know local businesses and 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 fabricators um, you know so I guess the last thing that I would have to say is if a responsible selection of the most durable and resilient materials that don't require toxic, you know, chemical cleaning processes um, that are going to uh, look good and stay uh, useful for a very, very long period of time. Um, so you're not, uh, you know, throwing away um, materials uh, in, a, in a very short life cycle. Would you like to develop a little bit more about uh, behavior and practices within organizations? Mm, absolutely. The, you know, any of the things that are provided are only as good as the behaviors that's going to support them. So uh, introducing uh, new behaviors and better practices with, uh, you know, with the people who are going to occupy these spaces is important. And I think uh, the best example I can give is, uh, you know, our own uh, at on Earth Day, we launched um, an Earth Day challenge. It was in the form of a uh, of a celebration of um, Earth Month. We like to extend Earth Day to being an Earth Month. And every week um, we issued a new bingo card of 25 squares um, that had uh, elective behaviors uh, that would encourage uh, you know, sustainable practices and, and you know, sort of green behaviors. And each week they had a slightly different theme uh, and we had a lot of participation from um, all of the offices firm wide. Uh, it allowed us to talk about and to post, um, you know, some of the uh, the innovative approaches that uh, individuals took. Uh, people were able to acquire tokens for their behavior um, adoptions, and uh, some of them, you know, were a continuation of things that they already done, and and some of them were brand new practices. Uh, so ultimately, at the conclusion. Uh, we recognized that we really did shift uh, behaviors from things that people hadn't considered doing uh, to uh, becoming the norm by the end of the month. And for that, I think we can be thankful and uh, they'll ha carry those practices uh, when we return to the office as well as carry, carry them on in their own uh, personal, uh, personal work environments remotely. Thank you very much, Suzanne, for uh, this discussion around uh, resilient workplace, uh, especially those days that we need to talk about it and we're, we're really all looking forward to see what role uh, sustainability will play in the upcoming post-COVID workplace design. Thank you very much. Oh, absolutely. <laughs>